Can you see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Hi, everyone. Yep. Thanks for joining. Uh, today's very uh, um, Maybe I started too fast. Teams is not ready yet. It's my computer to the night teams. Is it uh, me that loses game? On the... Everybody lost him now. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and he's frozen. Yeah. I'm sure draw, dial back in in a second. Come um, back. Here he goes. Yeah. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Can everyone see my screen now? Yes. And can hear me? Yes, okay. Yep. Yeah, so I just clicked on Teams and then when he was trying to go back to the other screen and then he just mm. died on me. All right, so I'll do it again. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the DSC community call. Uh, today, the agenda is very, very light because I've got a bit of a cold, so I'm not feeling too great. So we didn't have time to prepare anything. We're just going to go through uh, basics, basic updates on what's been going on, and then we'll open the floor to questions, comments from everyone there. If you have a question, um, I'll go very quickly through the agenda and then just unmute yourself and just um, dig in. All right. Call for speakers. As a reminder, by the way, so that I don't have to present every time, we have uh, we have a call for speakers for those, those DSC community calls. It doesn't have to be something long you just sometimes you say hey i want to demo these things for maybe five minutes you know when would be a good time and then we can just tell okay that sounds good we'll just add it to the agenda and then we know how, how many people we can fit in and um and then we can go like this but otherwise if you just have something last minute maybe you can come and then if we have nothing planned for the day you can just present and uh, we have this sessionized, so that's always available. Session sessionized.com slash DSC dash community. Uh, we don't have specific dates. You have the calendar. You know that we have those DSC community calls every six weeks. Feel free to submit, and then we will let you know when we can or cannot schedule you. Releases. Um, there's a few releases that happen. So SharePoint DSC and X -grid SSP. So I don't know if Johan, you've been working on the uh, or you know about the SharePoint DSC update. And I don't know Not if you're the SharePoint. I, uh, I saw that. Uh, so I tried to pick out uh, what I felt important for the change. Uh, and I actually didn't know there was a SharePoint subscription edition. So that's cool. It supports that now. Uh, no, I'm not uh, familiar with SharePoint. It's uh, Yorick uh, that uh, got all the knowledge in that. Yeah, it's not uh, there today. Yeah, I, I X-cred the SSP. It was, uh, I, I fixed the pipeline there to actually get it uh, released with the semantic versioning because there was, uh, the community said it was a problem using it with uh, uh, private repos, I think. Uh, so we fixed that. And okay. uh, yeah. Web Administration DSC is Preview 01. This one has been changed recently, although that was yeah, already... Yeah, it's, we mentioned this uh, last time that we, yep. uh, we converted this one to uh, removing the X from the resources and the module name. And what we did uh, was to break a web application because we missed an X in one of the... Uh, oh, schema uh, files that had a, 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 a second instance in the schema file that you missed. So this one should actually be released. Uh, so if uh, if I forget or please remind me in Slack so I can release this one uh, in a day. Do a full so. release instead of preview. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so they actually, uh, so people can use it. And uh, computer management, do you see the, there we, was a contrib contributor that uh, uh, fixed domain joining when the computer count uh, exists. Yeah, I've seen lots of activities on this one recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, computer management, DSC. Yes. And like, yeah. there's still uh, pull requests uh, being worked on, as far as I can tell. Yeah, we're, we're trying to get into get uh, two resources in this uh, to handle 
uh, uh, repositories, publishing repositories, and uh, being able to download the uh, modules and since uh, the resource were uh, put out of uh, uh, PowerShell get into a separate uh, a separate repository that hasn't been released yet. So the community needs this, so we are uh, merging, uh, trying to merge at least, uh, two new resources into computer management DSC as class-based resources. Uh, and if PowerShell team will release those, Later, we will remove them from computer management EC, but until then, we try to get them into computer management EC. It's the plan, at least. Yes. Yes. You know, temporary solutions usually last for a lifetime, so it's <laughs> probably going probably gonna to stay like that for a long time. But OK, sounds good. Thank you. SQL Server DSC? Uh, yeah. You, right? Yes, um, I fixed. Uh, I tried to get the SQL Server 2022 support. I almost got there. Uh, this seems to be um, a bug. Or, or actually, there's no, no, no bug. Actually, I think there's the wrong SMO libraries in the SQL Server module that's in the PowerShell, in PowerShell gallery. So uh, most resource works for, for all the resources does not work. They really break. I cannot uh, enable the integration test for those four resources. And I actually, I, I tried to uh, talk to the uh, SQL in the other. Uh, I know Chrissy has another Slack channel uh, and her gang over there. So I I talked to them and tried to find a solution to this. I thought maybe they remove stuff and change stuff, but apparently after my testing, SQL Server is the culprit here. It doesn't uh, work with SQL Server 2022. Yeah, so I, I know they've had a, an issue like this. So yeah, good luck with that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And actually, the, they are the SQL PS version that actually uh, is installed with the SQL Server do work uh, with those problems, but the, using that will break other stuff because SQL PS is uh, putting the SMO assemblies into GAC. And when, uh, that, when using SQL PS from GAC, you cannot use uh, two different instances on the same server because they, it, it's a big chance they're trying to load the wrong assemblies, assembly versions, and then it breaks. So my hope uh, uh, was that the SQL Server module would be the, the one that always was kept working with all the recent release of SQL Server and below, uh, but apparently not. So. We have to wait to see if something changes. Okay. Until then. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it's not a, a auto load uh, issue. So, yeah, we'll discuss that later. But basically, I was asking uh, Dongbo about um, so when you try to uh, manage different. Uh, libraries and then you want to load a different set of libraries depending on your environment, but you don't want to conflict basically in uh, script. So if you're not writing your modules in C sharp, you have basically no way to make it work. That's the answer. You can't have those uh, the, the segregation of, you know, having a library, which is, you know, as an, the, the uh, common example is Newton soft. You can't have another Newton soft that the version already loaded by PowerShell. No, exactly. So you can do that if you write your, uh, your libraries in uh, your PowerShell modules in C sharp, but not if you write them in PowerShell. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the updates. Uh, have we missed anything? I can see a few people joined since there. I've seen Nick. Yeah, hi, Nick. And I've seen Steven as well. Steven is there. Hello. And that's the only news I had so far. I had a few things I wanted to show you. Uh, so first of all, the call for speaker, it's a reminder, call for speaker, we just want, you know, you just have to fill up some, some informations. Uh, you want a session, and when we call a session, it can be just a quick demo. That's just a way for us to, to discuss. Uh, sessionize is the way we 
we use for uh, registering those. Uh, obviously, all of those is, are. So yes, as a reminder, we have the community calls, and when we put them on YouTube, you can find them here. So you can find the other ones. And uh, PS Confu 2023 is uh, is planned and is going. So that's my personal advertisement for every one of you. Uh, we were lucky to have Jody, Stephen coming, and many many others. Uh, and all the recordings, including those on DSCs and uh, guest config, machine config, uh, machine config to manage whatever the name you want it to be today, uh, are available on YouTube. <laughs> Sorry, Jody. <laughs> and um, so, yes, so in 200 days, and I'm looking forward to this, but um, we also have the call for speakers open for PS Config until the 16th of December, so only 16 days to go. And with that, I am done. If you have anything you want to bring up, if you want to discuss, um, feel free to unmute and ask the question. I have the, maybe the first question. If Nick is around and if he's not too uh, snowed under, because I, I, I know from some pictures I've seen on Facebook, I believe, that he's got lots of snow over there. Um, do you have any news on the, on the M365 um, DSC projects? Hey, um, actually, snow all melted. It's raining, so we have Seattle weather oh. right now. Um, no, no news per se. Um, I was talking with um, uh, Raymond Andre uh, yesterday, and he mentioned that it might be um, value in me just giving a quick overview of M365 DSC in one of the future calls. Um, so more than happy to do so. Uh, talk about some of the roadmaps. I don't have anything prepared right now. To be honest, the, the focus right now is more around what we call the Dynamics Resource Generator, which is a way for us to reverse engineer REST APIs onto DSC resources. So the idea is uh, for us to stop chasing our tails. And by the time we're done creating one resource for M365, there's about 20 items that have been deprecated and 20 new features that have been rolled out. Um, so this idea is that as soon as there's an update to, uh, let's say, the Graph REST API, we can automatically generate a DSC resource for it. Because let's face it, the pattern is always the same, get, set, test. Uh, as long as we have CRUD operations on REST, we can dynamically generate those. So that's really the focus right now. Um, but if more than happy, if we have time slot for one of the, the upcoming calls to do a more in-depth uh, presentation. Yeah, sounds great. Six weeks, in six weeks, which uh, which actually I need to double check because uh, that might, six weeks might be around Christmas time or early January. So that might be, that might be a bit hard. We'll see. But uh, definitely, yeah. If you submit, uh, you submit something, or just hit me up on uh, on Twitter or something, and then we can work it out. Sounds great. Will do. Thanks. It might be me or Yorick actually doing it, but yeah, good. Thanks. But perfect. Sounds good. Anyone else? Any question? Um, I guess one thing I can share too is uh, today we released uh, the guest configuration module 4.2. Uh, this module just contains some bug fixes as well as quality improvements that were specifically around. Um, some new tests and um, sort of fixes to properly include sub-module dependencies. Uh, this was specifically for Linux. Um, so feel free to give that a download and let us know if you have any feedback. 4.2. I can put the link yeah. in the chat too. Yeah, I'll do it. It's that, that one. Just, there we go. Um, um, I have a question. Will you rename this module? Yeah, that is that is in our roadmap. I think that we're going to be waiting till version five to do that. Um, and 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 it's on our roadmap. So I think that we're just looking at exactly exactly what's involved there. And um, I think it's going to be a little bit more complicated than we thought. But the the plan will be to rename it to machine configuration. Yeah. Okay. And so it's going to be machine configuration. That's the that yeah, was it, my next question. That would be the next yeah. name. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Cool. Any more any more question? What's the roadmap that you have, Jody? <laughs> the bits you can uh, share, if if any, I don't know. Yeah, um, we've got actually some cool things that have come out in the last month, specifically for more of the built-in content side as well. Um, I can show a quick slide on that. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm also, yeah, I'm stopping. Am I able so you, to? 
You should be. Yeah, here. I think. Um. Cool. One sec. So we have some new built in configs that were published in the last month. Um, the first one being to disable local user authentication. So if this policy is applied, it ensures that servers can only be accessed through Azure Active Directory um, unless there's a specifically a unless there's a list of explicitly allowed users. Uh, so that's a good one to see in terms of like overall security posture. Um, we have the set secure communications protocol that was previously an audit if not exist policy, but we've since released capabilities for uh, the deploy if not exist functionality. Um, and the Azure Compute Security Baseline has released some major improvements over the last um, over the last month, specifically around alignment to the new CIS Azure Compute Windows Server Baseline. So if you're currently applying the Azure Compute Windows Server Security Baseline, that has alignment now to the CIS Azure Compute Baseline. Um, so happy to circulate some more literature around that if anyone will be interested. And we do have a private preview, which will be kicking off um, for the Linux remediation experience, um, likely in January of 2023. So if anybody's interested also in testing that out, please, uh, please let me know. Sweet, yeah. thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Mikey, any news uh, in your on your side? No. Nope. Things were uh, pretty quiet on the DSC front uh, after I got through uh, all those docs. Um, so nothing really worth talking about uh, in the short term. Thanks, D Jody. Uh, do you have updates on the? Uh, mission config uh, docs anything new coming up yeah so i think that right now we're in the process of kind of reworking some of our documentation structure to include more like architecture diagrams as well as a frequently asked questions page um so if there's anything that you anyone's looking to see now is like a really great time to uh bring that up and let me know um additionally just making sure that all of our examples reflect all the latest changes in our command lets so i think we're using the holiday season to kind of clean house and make sure all of our T's are dotted. <laughs> Perfect, thanks. Has anyone else has questions or things they would like to see or to hear, whether from uh, the Mission Convict team, the PowerShell team, because Steven is around, even if he's not saying hi, I can't see him. Yeah, he's connected. And um, on then the docs team, because Mikey is there. Any question? from anyone and if you don't want to say it and go on mute you can also type it on the chat although i'm not watching it right now i guess this means there are no bugs and everything's working perfectly so perfect that's awesome everything's working fine love it ah no there's a question there we go regarding guest configuration i recall it is only audit that is in ga no actually the set has been ga since june ish June, yeah, July. I'll go oh, ahead and post it. the blog post in the chat too again. But yeah, we went GA at the beginning of August. So uh, for being able to configure settings. So and excited can to see you, that. Can you explain what Dyn means, means? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So Dyn represents the deploy if not exist functionality through Azure policy. But as it relates to our service, we have three auditing modes. The first one is audit only, which is like a one to one mapping to the audit if not exist functionality. And then we also have apply and monitor and apply and autocorrect. So apply and monitor configures the settings inside the affected resources once and then monitors for changes. But in the event of configuration drift, it won't go ahead and uh, take any take any immediate action. But the apply and autocorrect mode will ensure that there's continuous monitoring as well as continuous um, continuous drift uh, drift protection and in the form of like remediation if something drifts. Yep. Thank you. No problem. Just posting that blog in the chat. I just like the Dyn acronyms is not necessarily something that every people will know totally. unless they've been playing. Yeah, unless they've been playing with policies like, yes, it's not like totally. That. I always forget to check myself on acronyms too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Not good. Thank you. So if uh, someone doesn't have anything else, I can show you the problem I have with SQL Server uh, if you if you want to see. 
Uh, and you have you have to see. I don't want problems today. I want solutions. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. And in the meantime, if someone has any question related to whatever your hand is uh, showing us or anything else, feel free to drop it in the chat or raise your hand and then we will we'll give you, uh, we'll let you talk in turn. Yeah, so this is quick here. So, so we, I have installed the SQL Server 2022 on this uh, lab machine. Uh, uh, and we have a SQL Server uh, module. This uh, SQL Server BSC is the, the resource module, of course. A SQL Server is the module released by this SQL Server team uh, in PowerShell Gallery. Uh, so if we now do uh, import module SQL PS, SQL PS is the module actually released with SQL Server during when you install SQL Server, you get SQL PS2. Uh, so we run that. And it's going to take a few minutes. I don't know why it takes so long here. Maybe because this one, I, um, I don't know, it's, it's very slow for some reason. It should go faster. Now to do this, you see it fills these properties and this fills these properties with the instance name. So this is a service instance. If you have more service instances on uh, uh, SQL Server instances on the same server, you're going to get more of these. And now if we go into uh, another window, so so we, we I can show here that uh, uh, can show here that when we load this, we when we load C, C, SQL PS, we get uh, assemblies from SMO assemblies from GAC here. It's says true here. And this is the one we use, we are using to get this information. So if we go here and we say import module SQL server instead. And then we copy the same one here and do this. We don't get anything here. It's black. So this is what breaks the resources. Some of them. There's another issue too that I haven't dug into yet, but this is one problem. So if you look at this now, uh, and we show the assemblies. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good, right? So we now see these are loaded with the module. The, these are bundled. This SMO assembly is bundled in the module. So my guess is that these assemblies are using it's it not the latest assemblies that SQL Server 2022 20, needs. So what I'm looking for is a new module for SQL Server that actually have these new assemblies in them. There is a preview of this SQL Server module in PowerShell Gallery, but that doesn't work either. So the latest preview does not work either. Unfortunately, so, so that's my problem in SQL Server DC right now to get the last uh, some of the two, two at least two of the resources working. So now we have that recorded. So if someone knows any uh, solution to this, please help. Uh, because if if we, I can also mention that SQL Server DC, if SQL Server module is installed on this target node, it will use that before it uses SQL PS, because if the node has several instances, we had a problem with that. It first loaded that that Gail mentioned. First, it first loads the assemblies. It actually loads the assembly it first finds in GAC, which can be an entirely wrong assembly to even use any of the instances installed. If you have uninstalled an uh, earlier version of SQL Server installed a newer version, then you still have the assemblies in GAC, uh, and then it breaks. So that's why we, in SQL Server DSC, we went for, so we wanted to use SQL Server module as the preferred module to use. So if it's installed, SQL Server DSC would use that module before it even tries to load SQL PS. Uh, 
If it doesn't exist, it will use SQL PS. But some, uh, some resources also need SQL Server because everything doesn't work with SQL PS. So I have catch 22 here. So, yeah. So, anyone know some solution? Please help. That's it. Yeah. Uh, we don't hear your day. You're muted. Yeah, I said good luck. <laughs> that was not very helpful, but I said, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, that's probably that might be a bug that you have. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. Honestly, yeah. Uh, you so you took to Chrissy? No, not to Chrissy. Uh, I will uh, try to ping her. Uh, also. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll gonna do that to see if she knows anything. She, I know she has the. Uh, a better connection to the SQL Server team with our DBA tools. And, and also, I want, I'm going to try DBA tools to see if that solves the problem, because she has also, also used the latest uh, SMO assemblies into DB, DBA tools. Yeah, so that's what I was, I was about to say. Yeah. 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 So maybe DBA, maybe you, will have DBA to, you will have to bypass the module import on just rely on the SMOs. Yeah. <laughs> dangerous, uh, Daniel. <laughs> And honestly, if I if I if I load a module, I probably don't want to do that. <laughs> the, the, that's probably the thing. Like you don't want to do that. Well, you don't you don't want to have to do that, especially. Mm. All right. So, is there any other question or comments or things people want to discuss? If there's nothing, then. Uh, you can stay around, but I'll probably go for an early, uh, an early sleep for once. <laughs> okay, Thanks, so guys. I think uh, Daniel, you can stop the recording, and then usually when you stop the recording, this is when everyone uh, starts talking.